So, <laughs> hello everyone and God bless. I don't really have a hand free because I've got my son, John, joining us today for this intro. So something new that I'm actually going to be also introducing to the channel is going to be bite-sized introductions to lives of different saints that I've read and that I think you might be able to draw something valuable from too. St. Arsenios the Cappadocian was born in about 1840 in Farasa, which is now a region in what is now modern-day Turkey. And during this time, there was actually a great uh, exchange of populations, as it was called, which displaced many uh, local Greeks from their homes. Now, Farasa and Cappadocia in particular has been home to many great saints, many early church fathers, such as St. Uh, Basil the Great, uh, St. Gregory uh, of Nyssa. We, we have countless, countless saints and fathers that come from Cappadocia. It's a holy land, including more contemporary saints, uh, such as Elder Euronimos of Aina. Um, we also have uh, St. Yakovos of Ivea, and we have uh, just countless examples, even in a yet-to-be-canonized saint, uh, Yerenda uh, Arsenios, the cave dweller, who was actually uh, underneath uh, St. Joseph the Hesychast. When St. Arsenios was a young man, his younger brother Theodoros had fallen into a river near the field where they had, uh, well, it was a fast-moving stream, near the field that their father had. And, uh, of course, uh, young Arsenios was extremely distressed, fearing for his brothers, uh, you know, that his brother would be killed in the process. And he prayed for God to send help. What's fascinating is that all of a sudden, a monk uh, on the back of a white horse suddenly came riding through the stream and scooped the boy up and placed him safely downstream. And it was later revealed that this very monk was actually St. George the Martyr, also known as St. George the Dragon Slayer, who had actually rescued young Theodoros. This was just one of many miracles that were the results of St. Arsenios' prayer. St. Arsenios was, of course, an ardent defender of orthodoxy, and although he was merciful, he could be very stern. Uh, there was an incident in which a local uh, Protestant within the village of Farasa had hired for a Protestant preacher to come and proselytize the people. St. Arsenios chased him off, saying, Farasa has one Protestant, and he's more than enough. And in the words of St. Paisios, who wrote his biography, the Protestants were already becoming a hornet's nest in Cappadocia at that time. And so he sent him off, and he said, anyone who says good morning to this person should know that his body will not decompose when he dies. And what St. Arsenios is saying here is not that uh, this Protestant Kupsis, what I believe was his name, uh, is a holy man. Because decomposition is not always associated with saints, but can also be the result of unholiness. So we do have a case where there is a certain Orthodox uh, patriarch <laughs> responsible for certain issues that cause a lot of divisions in the church, whose body has not decomposed, and it is certainly not the result of anything holy. There is a process of discernment, but that's a topic for another day. Uh, what's fascinating is that in the life of St. Arsenios, we see many miracles. There was one time when there was a couple of Muslims who had, uh, who, who had come to, to talk to him. And as they were discoursing and talking about things, he finally had enough with them blaspheming and insulting his God. And so he merely looked at them and the Muslims became frozen. And after a while, after they, they, they were pleading for him to free them from their state, uh, by his prayers, they were released. He just kind of waved his hand and said, go. And what it turned out was is that, uh, of course, God had given him the authority to bind them in place. And so the Muslims said, you know what, you're right, we're the servants of the devil, uh, we, we're out of here. <laughs> there, there were other uh, similar events, of course, in his life. One of the most amazing miracles, though, that, that I enjoyed reading in his life was how St. John Chrysostom actually intervened in preventing an attack from, uh, from a group of Turks. Uh, when they were planning to assault the village and he actually appeared on the bridge that was uh, the sole point by which they could pass into their lands and barred their entrance and they even the, the Turks saw him with their own eyes and said we can't go St. John Chrysostom protects them so we, we see the powers of this saint's prayers what's fascinating he also baptized St. Paisios as a baby and even named him after himself prophesying that one day he would become a monk and not only did St. Paisios of Mount Athos become a monk, but he's become one of our most beloved modern-day saints. St. Saint Arsenios also was able to foresee where he would die and in the manner of, uh, in which he would die. And approximately 40 days after arriving in Greece, as he prophesied, he died on a small island. 
St. Arsenios is one of the greatest saints uh, of our times, really. He's still considered a contemporary, and he's one we should look to for an example in how to stand firm against ecumenism, and also how to exercise patience, love, and humility towards our enemies.